building a kite board from scratch. It's uh, first time building a kite board, so kind of learning as we go here. Uh, first step was to build a mold. Uh, it's a single concave mold, pretty simple process. If you look up how to build a half pipe, you'll see the, uh, the idea. You can look up how much rocker, which is the curve of the board, online. There's all sorts of options. And uh, as far as overall dimensions go, it's all online as well. Different rider weights, different rider styles, uh, like different things. If it's the first board, I didn't focus too much on any of the details because uh, it's a learning process you go. So you rough cut the, uh, the core of the board is Divinicel or Corsel foam, really light stuff. And uh, I've rough cut two sheets here, and I'm going to plan to glue the two sheets together into the curvature of the board. So the way I'll glue it is I'll uh, spread out the glue between the two layers, and then I'll put a vacuum bag over the whole thing. So for the vacuum bag, I lay it out on the ground to get the size right. I, uh, I cut, I oversize the dimensions of the bag, and then I put the tacky tape, which is uh, the yellow tape you'll see, onto the bag first. And then when I go to actually put the bag on this table, uh, I'll be putting what we call darts, uh, or little creases. And because the bag is bigger, it'll then suck down onto the board. The next step will be to uh, epoxy the two pieces of foam together. We're using the total boat system. It seems to work well for everything we're doing. And uh, we'll be mixing in a little bit of thickener just so that we have some thickness to the glue joint so that we don't just have epoxy or end up with voids. Uh, so we'll, we'll lay out a thin layer on both. Uh, we'll be doing it in two batches. Uh, the first batch we'll just dump out, get it spread nice and thin, and once the epoxy is spread out really thin, we have plenty of time to work with it on the next batch. So as long as it's thin, you have plenty of time to work. Then we'll lay up the next batch, we'll put the two together, we'll move them around a little bit, uh, that way we get a really good bond, we make sure the epoxy is in there good. Then we'll put breather on top, let the air flow uh, out of the vacuum, make sure we don't have any air bubbles caught, and then we'll slide the whole thing into the bag. So one thing you'll notice as I'm throwing down the tacky tape in the vacuum bag is I'm putting these little creases every so often. Uh, I call them darts, not sure what the technical term is, but the idea is that you're going to be putting an object underneath this bag. So if you had no darts, the object would actually lift the bag and you wouldn't be able to get the vacuum to pull in around the corners. So you add these darts uh, as often as you think is necessary. More is always better, always safer, uh, whenever you think you need them. We'll close off the top of the bag. We'll uh, pull all the air out, let the vacuum do its thing, and then we'll call it a night and check on the product tomorrow.